My tourism family, I greet you well. You've made a wise decision to arm yourselves with as much information as you can regarding the robust health and safety protocols that have been established to tackle COVID-19. In these unprecedented times, knowledge is power, and your cooperation will help us to get back to normality sooner than later. Each module of this training program targets a different subsector of the tourism industry. And although some guidelines are generic, there are also sector-specific requirements. I encourage you to absorb the information as much as possible and to share with those you know, particularly the ones most impacted by these unfortunate circumstances. Your health and that of your guests is top priority. And while we want to keep everyone safe, we understand that reopening the sector is crucial for all our sustenance. This sector has been a lifesaver for so many of us, and my ministry and its agencies want to continue to contribute to that well-being. As you are aware, the global COVID-19 pandemic halted the sector for a few months. This resulted in many of our tourism workers being displaced and uncertain of their future. With this in mind, we impressed upon you to take charge of your own health and safety and those around you as we traverse this rocky road. It is said that tough times don't last, but tough people do. We are tough, we are resilient, and together we can get through this pandemic. We have learned many lessons that have paved the way for a new tourism. And with your help and in time, we will be a sector like we've never been before. Learn all you can from presentations and make the necessary changes as you go back into your workspaces. Pleasant viewing and stay safe. Now, safety is one of the most important elements in anything that we do. In anything that we do, we want to ensure that we are safe. Agree? So safe and resilient tourism has consistently been the foundational element of Jamaica's tourism industry. Our tourists and Jamaicans alike have high expectation for Jamaica as a top Caribbean tourism destination. So these protocols that we are going to observe today will take into account the health and safety and well-being of our tourists, the employees, and the community. And this is seeking to reduce the risk of exposure to COVID-19 while promoting an enjoyable and relaxing experience. So it's not just to reduce COVID-19, but also to promote an enjoyable relaxation for our visitors. So these protocols are designed by a collaborative effort and the Ministry of Tourism being the umbrella organization along with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Tourism Product Development Company, and also JHTA, that stands for Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association. The goal of the Ministry of Tourism, COVID-19 Health and Safety Protocol, is to strengthen Jamaica's resilience to COVID-19. And take note that it says strengthen Jamaica's resilience because we have always been a resilient country. We have bounced back from so many different occurrences in the past, hurricane, earthquakes, and you can name a few. So this is to safeguard all stakeholders within the tourism ecosystem, including us as the workers, our communities, and of course, our visitors. The goals and objectives provide guidance to enable consistent recovery protocols, support health and economic risk management across the tourism industry, provide a framework to drive quality assurance of implemented protocols and regularly, regular monitoring. Maximize effective recovery by facilitating and improving the flow of information and coordination. Enhance and coordinate recovery intelligence gathering and information sharing capabilities. So there are eight key health and safety elements of the Jamaica tourism sector. And the first one is sanitization stations. So 
sanitization for workers, visitors, and surrounding across all location. You have some of us who were already practicing that method, but now we need to do more than normal. Face mask and personal protective equipment. Face mask and our personal protective equipment for workers, visitors, and also our surroundings. The third element is physical distancing as what we're practicing now. We're six feet apart from each other. Clear and frequent and consistent messaging. We're not operating in isolation, so all information must be clear, frequent, and consistent to give us Jamaican the awareness and our visitors, of course. Technology enablement. And this one, you might see being used more often with our smartphones. We usually maybe take pictures or just use it for social media. But now we're using it for meetings. We're using it for our children are getting their homework on it. So we realize that technology now is definitely improving. Real-time monitoring and reporting. So we are doing our regular temperature checks as what you did when you were coming on the inside. And this is to monitor the health of each person for us to take it to another level, just in case we need to. Rapid and clear response, clear protocols when care is necessary for any worker, visitor, or community member. And the final one, which is training, this is an example of what training is. You're here learning how to keep yourself safe, how to keep your family members safe, and how to keep Jamaica and our visitors safe, which is most important. So we're getting into the meat of the matter. So the scope of this document entails protocols or guidelines as it relates to shops, stores, malls, boutique, and craft markets. Now, a minimum of one employee at any time during the opening hour. This person is called the safety point person, or SPP. So it is recommended that at each property or within each shop, you have a minimum of one employee at any time during opening hour, and this person should be specifically trained and designed to find out if someone has the symptoms. That's the point person. If you see someone who is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, if you need information in regards to how to, to report, then this person is the point person. The SPP should contact regular spot checks throughout the property and observe that protocols are being observed. The SPP should also serve as a point person, as I said before, for all employee and guest complaints and is required to document, investigate, all complaints that they would get surrounding the issues of COVID-19. So some of the supplies that we will need in order to enforce these protocols. We have the mask, just as though you're wearing your mask now. I know it's uncomfortable, it can be very hot, but we have to wear our mask, especially for those who have underlying Ill illnesses or issues. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers, and it's recommended that it must be 60% alcohol-based or above. Spray disinfectants or wipes. Hand-free garbage cans with covers. So those are the garbage cans that you can use your, your foot to open. So those are recommended. No contact handheld thermometer, and it must be minimum of two at an entrance at each time. Disposable gloves, of course. Measuring device, and the measuring device will help you to, to put the respective six feet distancing um, into, into place. Indicators, having your flags and your markers, your stakes and your codes, in order to put the six feet, as I said, distance into place. Single-use paper napkins or towels. So once persons have used them, then they dispose of them. Soap dispensers, of course, and it's recommended that it, you don't touch them, but if that's what you have in place, then you have to work with whatever you have 
The document is not saying that you need to go and install or spend a lot of money to buy things to, to forward these protocols. But if you have them, you work as best as possible with what you have. Signage regarding protocol requirements. So within this space, you want to have signage very clear so persons know exactly what is needed to be done and how to contact the Ministry of Health and Wellness if in the event that they need to. Employees' well-being. If you're not safe, then you cannot guarantee the safety of your visitors or your patrons. So reopening will be gradual with staggered starting time for employees or craft traders to allow for a smoother rollout and management of testing and care. So once we reopen, we won't have everybody coming in at one time. It would be best to have a flexi shift, persons coming in today, then you have others coming in tomorrow, but not to have all your employees coming in at one time. Brief employees or traders on resumption of work to remind them to disclose to the best of their knowledge, they have not been exposed to anyone with COVID-19. They do not have symptoms of COVID-19. So these are the questions that would be asked upon coming back to work. You won't be tested, but a questionnaire must be conducted with the following questions surrounding if you have been exposed to someone with the virus or do you yourself have symptoms of the virus. Check in formally on the health of employees or traders on a regular basis. So after persons have come back to work, you still want to check on a regular basis if that person is developing any signs or symptoms of COVID-19. And it is recommended that you do this every six, four to six weeks. And if they are showing symptoms of COVID-19 or other risk factors, testing may be appropriate. Those who test positive are required to be reported to the Ministry of Health and Wellness for quarantine and contact tracing. It is recommended that you take the temperature of each employee or craft trader upon arrival for their shift. So temperature test must be done upon arrival for each person coming on on their shift. Require employee or traders to wear masks throughout their work shift and when they're interacting with their customers. Require employees or craft traders to sanitize or wash their hands regularly throughout the day and the minimum, which is the minimum of one hour, one time or once per every hour. And after the following interaction, of course, you want to wash your hands after you have collected money. If you have processed a credit card, handing items from the visitors or from the patrons, and of course, when you have touched common errors. You want to always keep washing your hands, sanitizing your hands after doing these things. Cleaning activities require all cleaners to wear protective apparel when conducting their cleaning duties. And some of these cleaning apparels are your mask, your gloves, your disposable apron, and so forth. Provide specific guideline on the PPE, which is the personal protective equipment for workers to wear for the following activities. So when you're cleaning, you must be wearing your mask or your face shield, your disposable gloves, or your disposable aprons. When you're disinfecting, you want to have on your mask again, your face shield, your disposable gloves, and so forth. And once you're sanitizing, then you must have on your mask. Sanitize all public touch points on a rotating basis throughout the operating hours, with each service being cleaned at a minimum every two hours. And these surfaces include your door handles, your railings, your desk, flat surfaces, etc. Hand waste using gloves, tongue, and bag waste properly. Perform routine maintenance of air conditioning, vents, or filters to promote indoor air quality and limit exposure. So we're not saying that for persons who have their, their shops that they should not use their AC or their air conditioner, but you need to perform routine maintenance of the air conditioner. For the entrance in our common area, utilize automatic doors, keep doors open if possible, 
or have door manned by one person to mitigate excessive contact of one surface by multiple individuals. So you notice when you were coming into the hall, we had security officers on the outside, and that one security officer was manning the door, so it's less persons touching that common area. Mark the ground with physical distance, line spacing for queues or lines, both inside and outside of the establishment. So just as when you were going to the registration area, you notice that you had some blue lines, and this tells you where you need to stand. So this is what it's saying, mark your, your territory with a six feet distancing so your visitors are aware of where they should stand. Erect hand sanitizer dispensers and or hand wash stations at the entrance to the establishment. Include signage in clear and visible area throughout the property. And you want to have those sign, signage very clear because you can't be reprimanding your visitors if they do not know what the protocols are. So you have to advise them before you can reprimand them. Agree? Ensure employees or craft traders are familiar and know how to report suspected cases or contact with COVID-19 positive person to the following. You can report to the parish public health facility. You have the website there and everybody should know the 1-800-1-LOVE number. Every or each employee must be familiar with how to report suspected cases. Communication. It is recommended that you make Jamaica COVID-19 safety protocols pamphlets available in hard copy or digital format to those who would like to see what is being done for health and safety. So you have pamphlets or brochures that the visitors can take to see what we are doing in order to mitigate the problem and ensuring that they're always safe and that their health is our top priority. It can also be done digitally because a lot of persons now are walking around with their tablets and their phones, so you can WhatsApp the pamphlets very easy and that would less the contact between yourself and the patron. Erect signs at the entry point and key locations around the property detailing the procedures which are in place and what customers are expected and how they can comply. So you have to have clear signage around so persons know what are expected of them. Include penalties for non-compliance. So if someone doesn't want to adhere to the rules and regulations that are being put in place, then you can ask that person politely to remove themselves. You can do that. Guest interaction. Greet guests with a warm and friendliness approach. Remember that guests are visiting to relax and enjoy the beauty and culture of Jamaica, which includes the interaction with people. Someone asked the question the other day, how can I smile having been wearing a mask? You probably wonder the same question, how are they going to see that I'm smiling with a mask on my face? But your eyes, tells a lot, and your body language also says a lot. And for me, because I have fat cheeks, whenever I smile in the mask, you can still see it on the top of my face. So I'm sure persons will still see that you're smiling. So even though you're wearing the mask, you still want to have that warmth and friendliness to your visitors. Remember that they're here, they're getting away from their part of the world that is also suffering from the same problems or even more than what we are having now so they want to feel relaxed. Remind guests of protocols with a smile and in a polite and respectful manner. Sanitize our hands after receiving cash. So remember, sanitize your hands each time after receiving the cash. Don't be too happy to receive the cash and don't remember that you have not sanitized your hands. You must sanitize your hands each time you have collected their monies. For store or shop entry, determine maximum number of patrons in the store based on the six feet per person distancing. And monitor the door to ensure the limit is not exceeded. And we have been seeing that now more often. When you go to the bank, to the post office, or anywhere you do business, you realize that they can't allow everybody to be on the inside. 
And so you gradually move in once others come out of that building. Ensure all patrons sanitize their hands upon entry to the store or to the shop or to the craft market. And this is very imperative, just as what happened when you were coming on the inside. I'm sure that all your hands were being sanitized when you enter into the building. So it is recommended that once you're coming onto to your property, whether it's a craft shop or in the stores, you want to sanitize your hands before they enter. Enforce mask using within stores by customers. So you have to enforce that they are wearing their mask at all times. For stores, display a single size of top selling apparel to reduce unnecessary contact and touching of merchandise by patrons. So provide a new item depending on the size to the customer if available. So usually when you see, when you go into this clothes store and you, you see the different t-shirts or different clothes item um, being displayed, you want to ensure that you display them so persons without going through them to find their sizes. They know that, okay, then this is Excel, over here is large, over here is small. So they can go to the designated area that they are looking for. Ensure for jewelry and accessories. Ensure the jewelry counters have hand sanitizers and wipes nearby where applicable or where possible. For items which cannot be safely sanitized, require patrons and employees alike to sanitize or wash their hands before touching. So you have some jewelry that you cannot put any water or sanitizers on them because it will change the quality of the jewelry. You don't want to spoil the, the quality of the jewelry. So you're going to kindly ask the patron who wants to try to sanitize their hands before touching the jewelry. For those that you can wipe, wipe jewelry after each contact with a with a each contact with a patron using alcohol-based sanitizers. For the, so for the jewelry that you can sanitize, then you can do so. For the bathrooms, erect hand sanitizer stations at the entrance to the bathrooms. Place floor markers or indicators on the ground to guide patrons as to where the line will need to form should waiting occur for the bathrooms. Utilize hand-free garbage cans with covers for no touching waste disposal. As I said, you, the preferred one is the one that you would manipulate with your, with your foot. But if you, don't have that, if you don't have that, then you use a regular one, but ensure that the garbage bag you have inside is changed regularly to prevent that overflowing of garbage. For inventory delivery, even though these persons don't necessarily work with your company, but they are coming into your place of business and they're providing you with the materials that you are now selling, you need to take the temperature of each delivery person. Those with escalated or, or elevated temperatures should be documented and of course they should be denied entry. Mandate and enforce the use of wearing masks of delivery personnel. So even though they don't work directly with you, you still can enforce these guidelines because remember you're protecting yourself and you're protecting your staff members. This is a question. A customer enters the craft market and is not wearing a face mask. Does the craft market supervisor have to ask them to leave and potentially have the vendors lose out on a sale? So if a visitor should walk in and they're not wearing a mask, do you think it is necessary for the, the, the supervisor to tell the person to leave? No. The craft market supervisor or the vendor should direct the patron to a vendor stand who is selling the mask. You agree? Okay. These are general guidelines for persons to operate. I'm sure that each craft market or each shop has their own protocol that they are developing in order to keep themselves safe and their employees safe. So everything won't apply necessarily to your space, but there are general guidelines, as we said, to ensure that we adhere to these and mitigate the problem that we are now facing.
Good morning. Morning. Some of us sell in the hotels. And you know that tourists, we can come in groups. Sometimes they come in groups. Some of them might not be wearing masks. How do we deal with the situation like that? All right, for persons who are traveling in group, that six feet distancing does not necessarily apply to them. Once you're traveling together, then that six feet distancing won't apply to them. You're applying that for persons who did not travel together. And if they are not wearing masks, you said you spoke about being on the hotel property. The hotel also have their own protocols put in place. And these visitors will know that once you're on the property, they should be wearing a mask. But if someone should approach you and they're not wearing their mask, then you can let them know that they need to put on their mask. Remember, these visitors are used to wearing masks, you know, wherever they are in the world. Right now, they have to wear it. So Jamaica is no different. I was just saying, like, we are at the Arbor Street Craft Market. And take for instance, like, I think we should have a um, sanitation area entering into the market. Both we and the guests should be sanitized before we enter the market. And I was thinking of... Say, I think the market should sanitize before we enter back into the market because it needs a general sanit cleanup and sanitize. Good point, valid point. And remember, each market is, has its own manager, president, etc. So it's something that you can implement amongst yourselves. So we're giving you a guideline, and that's an excellent point. You know, so as you enter, and then each shop has their own measures in place, it's an added layer of protection. Yes, I want to thank you for the guidelines and everything that has been said, we take carefully notice of it. But honestly, one of the clips that said, um, we should wear our masks while interacting with the guests. But sad to say, we are not getting no guests to interact with. No guests. Well, I'm from so the says, Arbor Street Craft and Culture Village. And so says everybody right now. The thing is at a total standstill. Hence, we're here. I mean, with the information and knowledge so that we can get the industry rolling again. So absolutely, that's the cry of every single solitary person in the industry at this moment. So we, we all feel that pain, you know? Yeah, borders are closed. There's nobody there, you know? There's nobody anywhere. Uh, as I listen to each of these sessions, it always suggests that we're going to have to spend more money to make this work. Now, I don't know how many of the people here, but I have not received my stimulus money. If I got my stimulus money, I could get masks to give yeah, yeah. people. So I'm just kind of wondering what kind of adjustments are going to be made on that. Yes, indeed, it would go a far way to help. I'm sorry, uh, I can't hear you. I said, yes, indeed, it would go a far way in assisting everyone. Uh, but we'd have hoped that the monies would have been paid out by now, but they are still in the process of verification. Because imagine, you can imagine, many persons have applied who are not eligible. So would you like to know that a lot of persons got paid and you, the eligible ones, were left out because the money ran out? So they're doing the verification process very diligently. But we'd have had, like yourself, I'd have hoped that the money would have been long ago and you're looking to get your second ones already. And you mentioned the cost of it. It is not, compared to other entities, the cost for you guys to get your equipment, the safety aspect of it is minimal because what it, for the majority of it is your mass, which at affordable prices you can have outside. I mean, I haven't seen better prices from the one this gentleman is offering right now. And sanitizers, alcohol, you it, you can get your aloe vera jelly, you can make your own little sanitizer. So it's not really that much of a cost, really and truly. Um, Think about it. Uh, it's just no disrespect, it sir. All I'm asking is, what kind of window should we look at for getting the stimulus? Well, f all week, this is the question that everybody has asked. I'm sorry? So all week, these, this question has come up in every session multiple times, because you, you know, in five, six times in the same session. And all I can tell you that the verification process is still ongoing. And I personally, like yourself, would have hoped that it would have been paid up by now, but there's a process. So I guess the minister can follow up and address that at that point, because everything is being recorded and it is being filtered up. And I'm sure they're doing everything now to expedite it because they are hearing the voice of the people. Okay, thank you.